people and shown that this is a, a evolutionary time in our in our earth and we need to wake up to that reality we need to embrace that I was told information back in 1996 1997 that things were going to be changing that there was going to be huge changes in the reality of mankind and even today even 13 14 years later those things are coming to pass they're a reality not a fantasy. I wrote about those things in the book that was published in 1999. How could I have known that? How could I have imagined the reality of 9-11? How could I have imagined the reality that our political system would be corrupt, that there would be a world economic crash? How could I have known that unless I was shown this information? Well, I was shown. I was told. And I didn't want to believe it at the time. I didn't want to believe that it was true. Because it's disturbing. But I know that I can't, I can't just throw away what I now know is true. I need to talk about it. And I've decided to, because I have no other choice, to try to help other people like me that have come through this and don't know how to deal with it. Because there are thousands of us all over the world who have had contact, who feel isolated, who feel alone, and we don't know how to deal with it on our own. But literally, because of the internet, we've been able to learn to come together as a global family, to support each other, and to find ways to comfort each other and learn from all of our experiences. Hey, we don't have all the answers. I certainly don't have all the answers, but we're learning more every single day. Since my first encounter, I may have had over a hundred more of them, where I've had physical, one-on-one -on -one contact. Not spiritual contact, not just etherical contact, but physical contact, just like you're sitting next to me now. Other people have seen this creature. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it comes with other ones with him. But as many as 30 and 40 people have witnessed some of these encounters. So it's not, it's not an isolated incident, you know? It's not something I'm making up. It's not a hoax that somebody's creating. We all around the world are not having the same delusion or illusion. We're not under some kind of hypnotic trance, nor is this an occult in any way. I'm not a prophet, I'm not a guru, I don't profess to be, but I will tell you what happened to me. And if you can learn from it, wonderful. If you don't want to believe me, I got no problem. Walk away, go find something else to spend your time with. Because I don't have any time to waste the rest of my life. I know there are things that are important to talk about, and this is one of those issues. This is a reality, and it's true. It's my truth. You know, some people talk about the fact that we're selling a book or a DVD concerning the case. Well, those books were written and the DVDs were made because of requests to explain the story. It costs money to produce that stuff. It costs money to go and talk to people all over the world. Airplane tickets, lodging, transportation. All that costs a great deal of money. So when people say, well, why aren't you just giving this information away? The first thing, as I said, is, well, I tried to do that in the beginning. I gave it to every media outlet I could and was basically refused or told that they couldn't handle it. They couldn't deal with this reality. They couldn't air it for one reason or another. And so then we wrote a book. So then we recorded a video and made DVDs because millions of people requested them. So in answer to people saying, well, why don't you just give it away? Well, hey, you give me the money to produce all these products, and I'll be happy to just give them away. I give away thousands of books and DVDs, you know, every year for the last 10 years. That's cost a lot of money to produce them.
anyway, this is the ranger station that I came to right after the encounter and pulled in and it was empty, just like it's empty now. And, uh, you know, there's, there's nobody in there. You know, I banged on the door and doors were locked and so I got back in and continued on my way. But basically this is the North Bend Ranger Station. People always say to me, they say, well, why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you call, you know, all these people? Well, first of all, this is 60 miles out in the middle of nowhere to begin with. And it's it just wasn't advantageous. I mean, I had to drive about 10 miles just to get to the ranger station to where anybody was. So was the first opportunity I had to get help, and then there was nobody there. In the process... Some of the video noise. Yeah, the video, the audio, a lot of that stuff I lost because people came through my house and stole a lot of stuff. Uh, they stole a lot of stuff from people that said they were part of the MUFON group, and they turned out not to have anything to do with that group. So, you know, I got to the point where I couldn't trust anybody. Did you roll the window up? Yes. Was well, there anything you want to ask me first? Well, first of all, you know, it's it's, it's a privilege to meet you, to share with you, and, and what you've been doing to tell other people about my experience and about other people's experiences all over the world. On October 15, 1996, I was walking in the woods with my dog, Susie, and we'd done this many times before, nothing unusual and I parked my Jeep and we had been walking for about an hour in the, in the woods, in the uh, Cascade Mountains of Washington State. And it was a beautiful afternoon, beautiful October day, and uh, all of a sudden my dog took off running and she was, began barking, almost like she was chasing an animal. And I lost sight of her, but this wasn't unusual, it's something she did all the time. I mean, dogs run off and they chase squirrels and they chase, you know, raccoons. And, and this is an area that's forest. It's not a park. So you don't have to have your dog on a leash. And I mean, it's the, it's the Washington State forest. So, and very remote. It's uh, 60 miles east of Seattle, which takes about an hour to get to. And uh, she was barking and I lost sight of her. And then she'd run back up to me, you know, happily, like normal, and we just kept walking. And we'd done this many times in this area, this very same area. So it was very comfortable for me in this moment. But one time she took off barking and, and ran farther away where I really, really had no idea quite where she was other than I could hear the barking. 